Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. It's Friday, and isn't it crazy how Fridays always end up having something crazy happen? For those of you that don't know, the top news today is that Ivana Trump is dead at 73 years old. Of course, this was Trump's first wife. We were just talking about the number 73 on yesterday's show as the year that the Slim Towers opened. Remember that? And then hours later, she's gone at 73. Now, there's something to this. And it took me a while to put it all together. They're saying that she had some kind of cardiac arrest. Let's take a look here at these headlines. He announced this on his True Social site. July 14th is the, the date. I looked at that date. I didn't see anything of note for the day of the year. But then I started doing some research on the number 73 and Trump. And lo and behold, during his presidency and after the fact, look at all these number 73s in all of these headlines. Now, the thumbnail actually shows all of these together in one montage image. But look at this. He hit the ball on the screws. Senator Graham details President Trump's improbable 73. Then you've got... Him making remarks at the 73rd session of the United Nations. Then you've got his Trump's $73 million tax refund stuck with little known panel. You have pardon, he pardoned 73 people. Commute sentence for 70 others. You've got online misinformation about the U.S. election fell 73%. And... You've got him playing golf 73 times during his first year in office. You've got Trump demanded metadata on 73 phone numbers. I mean, this is just spooky. Now, of course, he did turn 73 during his presidency, but why not? He also turned 74 and 75 during his presidency. I think. I mean, you could do the math, but he had four birthdays. Why all these 73s? Apparently, Bo Mama wrote Trump a $73 million check. This is National Review. I'm not going to go through all these stories. There's something weird happening here. And then I began to think about what would be the motive behind something like this? Well, for those of you that don't know, it was during the years he was married to Ivana that he was very close with the stain. And she was the one that actually appears on the flight logs with Trump. Now you can look all this up yourself. We're not going to make a whole show out of this period in Trump's life and her involvement with the stain. But she's actually in the black book and other things as well. You know, these people as they reach levels of power. They want to turn away from their past, don't they? Especially if crazy things happen. Like people are being abused or dying during that period of their life and other people know about it. That's a liability, isn't it? So I don't particularly know. I'm not making any assumptions here. But it is weird that she just fell out from cardiac arrest. These people don't typically do that. You don't hear about this often. Now, I don't like to cover a lot of these celebrity deaths anymore we used to cover all of them because it appears as though there's some kind of pattern to some of this stuff the the moment that a person comes into this life as a child and the moment that they leave this life there's typically some kind of pattern to it it's really weird but in covering celebrity deaths and birth birthdays over the years we found all kinds of weird synchronicities now some of you did the math with her, and I think there was some someone came up with 88,000 months or hours or something like that. And that could be the case. I didn't really dig into that too much, but just the past and her connection to him and the stain would be enough for us to, you know, look at this and go, hmm, I wonder if that really didn't happen. 
I wonder if it really wasn't about cardiac arrest, but it was about something else. Let's read this here, see if we can find any more clues about exactly what happened. It's just weird that he announced it on Truth Social. I mean, I guess that would be the place to announce something like this, but let's read this. Former President Trump's ex-wife, Ivana Trump, passed away at the age of 73. According to a post from Trump on Truth Social, I'm very sad to inform all of those that loved her, of which they are many, that Yvonne Trump has passed away at her home in New York City. She was a wonderful, beautiful, and amazing woman who led a great and inspirational life. Her pride and joy were her three children, Donald Jr., Ivanka, and Eric. She was so proud of them, as we're all proud of her. Rest in peace, Ivana, Trump said. Trump uh, and Ivana had three children after getting married in 77, which include Donald Jr., Ivanka, and Eric. Spokesman for the New York Police Department told Fox News that police responded to a 911 call and they found her unconscious. It was at 1240 hours on July 14th. Police responded to the call at East 64th Street within the confines of the 19th precinct. So let's let's do a quick search here, see what we find on this. Ivana Trump. We're going to put the stain in here. See what we find. Uh, let's go into news here. Uh, of course, the whole news is going to be saturated with all this. Put in a time frame here, custom range, and we'll set this before she died. And see what that has to say. And we'll go back in here. Now there's some misinformation out there about this. Epic bromance, da, da 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 Looks like they've kind of buried this information. So that would be a different show. It might not even be worth going into on this on this channel at this point. But if you want to figure this out, all you gotta do is go into the black book. There's there's PDF files all over the internet about this. And you can see Ivana's involvement during that period in his life. So they're of course going to whitewash this because they want to put that all behind them and it will just be a distant memory. Now let's get into the rest of today's show because I was watching one of my favorite channels. This is Architects and, Eng and Engineers for Blind 11 Truth. And these guys look at the technical aspect of what happened on that faithful day and they break it down they've been working really hard to basically gather lots of architects and engineers have them sign a petition that states that they do not believe the official story and these are people with degrees they're engineers and architects right and so they would be the very people that we should be looking to to explain what happened on that day okay now, the one criticism I have of these guys, and it's not really a criticism, but they really shy away from some of the theories as to what actually happened. They're pretty much dead set on the thermite. And I agree that there was probably, that was probably a component to it, but I think this was a multi-pronged attack. Because these people always do things in threes, right? And or maybe the thermite was planted to throw people off the trail from the weapon that was probably used. But the reason why I bring this up is because I want you to listen to what they say next about how the towers were built like pyramids. Let me make sure you guys are with me and we'll continue on with this unbelievable revelation Many, many people have been saying that the towers were pyramids for a very long time. And now I'm going to show you the proof that they actually were pyramids. I don't know if this is new information, but let's take a listen here. 
So that's what each column was only about what three, three and a half feet apart. So a lot of still a dense uh, perimeter uh, column spacing. Now the central core columns were tapered with height. So the twin towers again, like that sort of Eiffel Tower image, were virtual structural pyramids. Again, like that sort of Eiffel Tower image, were virtual structural pyramids. So on the at the top left of the screen here, we see what the bottom most uh, built up uh, columns looked like. A lot of steel in those. As you went up the building, less weight to carry. The columns got, uh, you know, uh, le less sturdy till they were H, uh, you know, wide flange H shapes at the top. So, as you just heard him say, a structural engineer, the towers were built as a virtual structural pyramids. And so at the bottom, where all the weight was held, they were very thick portions of the core columns. As you can see in this image here, I want to be very specific here, because there's naysayers, always naysayers, right? And then as you went up to the higher floors, they kept getting less and less stable virtual pyramid. So that lends a lot more credibility to images like this, doesn't it? In the middle, you see that the two towers and the new Freedom Tower were laid out like the Giza pyramids on your left, which were laid out after the belt of Orion. Now, God spoke to Job in the Bible and he said, who can loose the belt of Orion? Well, only God can do that, can't he? We did a video on that verse in the Bible. And according to astronomers, the actual belt of Orion is loosening. The stars are moving apart. There's also, in that very same passage in the Bible, God tells Job who can bind Pleiades. And when astronomers look in the sky, Pleiades is actually moving closer together. Now, how could these ancient biblical writers have known that the stars were going to do this? You literally would have to look at these things. First of all, they didn't have telescopes when the Bible was written. You know, okay, I'm going to get on a soapbox here because I'm sick and tired of people coming here trying to discredit the Bible. I just had a, a group of people come on here. And try to tell me the Bible was written by so and so, and da 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 da, and it you know, it's not inspired of God, and it's just a big trick. Okay, how did they know? How did these ancient biblical writers know that the stars would do this? Until someone can explain that to me, then I will believe the Bible, and I will always believe the Bible. Because only the Most High would know that who inspired the writing of the Bible. Only he would know that the belt of Orion was being loosened and the Pleiades were being pulled closer together and being bound. Now, this is what the Bible was talking about. That in the last days, knowledge would increase. In other words... Scientific capabilities to actually measure this stuff is increasing in the last days, revealing the true glory of God, that he knows all of these things and he knew all of it, and that many of these biblical passages have deeper meanings. Nested meanings, meanings within meanings, confirmed through modern technology. It's up to us whether or not we believe it. I had someone else challenge me about Oh, what do you mean passages in the Bible could have deeper meanings? That's that's That can't be true. God isn't like that. Of course he is. Of course he is. We're going to limit God to one meaning about a passage in the Bible? He's God. There could be infinite meanings. 
as long as it doesn't contradict the rest of the Bible, as long as it doesn't contradict the gospel. Of course, he's going to have infinite meanings. He's going to have a meaning that a child could relate to, and he's going to have a meaning that an electrical engineer or a scientist could relate to because he's God and he's amazing and he created everything. It's our own understanding that limits us to seeing the actual glory of God in the word. And in the last days, as this knowledge increases, it will only continue to glorify God more and more and more. Revealing him as the true most high who set all this into motion and created everything. Wow, he is amazing. And we steal his glory when we try to limit the Bible to a third grade understanding. And that, that, that's as far and as deep as it goes. So the slim towers were pyramids. So I wanted to open the show today with those confirmations that strengthen the argument that America really never left. Or that America is actually Egypt and we really never left. Now... We're going to be a bit all over the place today because it's Friday and that's just what happens on Friday, right? It's like catch up day. We try to fit in all the miscellaneous stuff that doesn't really fit into a show. And I usually try to present on Friday these kinds of things. Somebody asked me about near death experiences. And I want to talk a little bit about this because I have a theory on this. Now, I don't know this for a fact. And I'm open to correction if someone has something different to say about this. But the idea popped into my head that there is an explanation for what these experiences are. Now, the Bible, of course, says that Jesus will return physically just as he left, right? He left in a cloud. He will return just like that is what the New Testament says. But what if what people see when they're at near death, what if that is a glimpse of the future? Let me explain. The Bible says the dead in Christ will be raised first. They're going to come out of the graves, right? So for them, they will wake up pretty much the instant that they die. In their timeline, because when they're dead, they're asleep, right? They don't know anything. The Bible says they, the dead know nothing. It would be like waking up from surgery. Now, of course, time really did pass, but in their mental and spiritual state, it will be an instant. It will be like the twinkling of an eye. And I always wonder if what people see when they're near death is a form of time travel. To the future, when Christ returns. I'm wondering if the tunnel that they see is the portal. Now, before you write this off as impossible, understand that Christ rules time. This would be totally plausible that he could teleport you near death to the end, ask you if you're ready to fall asleep and wait for him to return because you're seeing the future. And or you could end up in hell too. And maybe given a second chance to change your life. Knowing what your future was going to be. Because some people get that experience as well, don't they? So basically you go through this time portal. You see a glimpse of the future. Of Christ's return. But then when you decide to go back. You return to the past which is your present. Now, many of these experiences, Jesus tells people that there, there's more life to do. He says, it's not your time yet. Is what, pe what you hear people sharing their testimony about this. And of course, some people don't see Jesus at all. Their future is hell. And that's where their life was leading to. Now, as far as I know, this theory doesn't really contradict any of the tenets of the gospel or the Bible because I I do my best to research this stuff and be led by the Spirit to not entertain any thoughts that contradict the Bible. I know that some people do, but for me, if it's not 
biblical or if it doesn't con if it contradicts the Bible, I don't like to talk about that or research it because that can lead you down a different path. But wouldn't this be amazing if this is what people were seeing? And we're going to find all this out when he returns. Well, he'll tell us what that was when you were near death. So what happens if you go through the tunnel and you choose to stay with Jesus? Well, we would never know, right? If you were in that situation, you would just be with him at the end of time. But we wouldn't hear those stories because nobody would be coming back to tell us, right? Nobody would come back from the future. But if you did stay in the future, your journey here would be over. So you would, in our timeline, the person would die and pass, fall asleep, and then wake up in Jesus' arms whenever he comes back. Interesting, right? Now, Jesus, of course, is the master of time and space. So I believe that this, these kinds of theories are completely possible. And it's amazing to contemplate these ideas because really nobody has a, a real explanation, a spiritual explanation as to why this happens. Oh, they'll talk about chemicals in the brain releasing and your whole life flashing before your eyes. Think about that part of it as well. Your whole life flashing before your eyes. What does that suggest? It also suggests time travel. Fast forwarding. So, when he does return, I could spend years listening to God about the inner workings of how all this works. Because to me, this is amazing information. And he'll let us know if we got it right, won't he? Now, people ask me about the billions of humanity who never saw a Bible. I want to talk about that for a little bit before we get into some of these headlines. Because, you know, this is the number one thing that people talk about who want to criticize people of faith. They basically say, oh, what about all the people who never got to see a Bible? What about them? How can your faith be real if it's limited by a book? Well, it's not limited by a book. There are many, many examples in the Bible that talk about the word being written on people's heart. And who's to say that Christ won't reveal himself supernaturally during a person's life to present them with a choice? Kind of like the near-death experiences, right? Or a vision or a dream. Now one thing that most people that have near-death experiences share. The common theme. The white light and Jesus. Now they don't always say it's Jesus. But in many of these explanations. The way they describe it. This overwhelming sense of love. Person taking them in their arms. Even if they won't say Jesus' name, we all know that that is probably Jesus. Oftentimes, the person is given a choice to accept or reject this person when they present themselves, when he presents himself. And most people end up accepting him as their savior. And then when they come back from that, there's it's a, a religious or a spiritual awakening that then they can share with other people for those who will listen. Now, people might not believe what they're saying until they have their own near-death experience. So you see how even someone talking about this could segue later into someone accepting Jesus. Now, Jesus could also appear when someone's unconscious or in a dream. There are multiple ways that Jesus can reveal himself in your life. He can reveal himself to you when you're going through a really hard time in life. When you need him most. And sometimes when things are going great in someone's life and they don't really need Jesus, maybe that's why he doesn't show himself 
It isn't until the devil starts to take over in your life because if you're because you don't have belief in him, and then that's when he can come and save you. So, if the requirement to be saved is to accept him as your savior, don't you think that he would make himself available for you to get to know him? I think so. I really think so. Now, if you guys have stories of situations that you've personally experienced or someone that you know who never opened a Bible, but yet Christ came into their life, now would be the time to share that story. Because that is how he reaches people. The remote people out in the Amazon, people in unincorporated areas, people that weren't born into the quote-unquote Judeo-Christian belief system of the United States. There are many, many ways that Jesus can reach people. Now, the Bible says that all will know his name when he returns in the clouds and every knee shall bow. And to me, that means, that could mean that maybe they already met him. Maybe they're making the connection between an experience they had in their life and him returning and seeing him in the clouds and it reminding them of the time in their life where they were given the choice to accept or reject him when he presented himself in their life. So those are just some ideas. Now, got rebuked by a brother, mad at me because you can't just say Matrix is in the Bible without showing the Bible. You guys, part of the responsibility of this channel, these, these videos would be five hours long if I went through every single verse. But as you just heard, I just quoted about eight verses just in the beginning of the show. Here's the King James Version. The womb is the matrix. Right here. Here it is. The King James Bible. You have to take some personal responsibility and look up these verses when I quote them on the show. Exodus 13, 12. Okay? That's a soft rebuke. Because if I spend all my time, you know, running down all of this stuff for every single person, nothing would ever get done. Okay? And I wonder if sometimes if the enemy isn't speaking through people to try to sidetrack us. So I just address that. For those that don't believe that the word matrix is in the Bible, it's in there. So, let's get into some of these headlines today, you guys. Because things are appearing to go off the rails. Now, this is a story about Arizona. For those of you that live in Arizona... They are now passing laws to where you cannot film the police. Now, in this case, they're just saying you have to be more than eight feet away. But as we know with these slippery slopes, as soon as you start to take away someone's rights, it starts with eight feet, then, it, then it's going to go to 24 feet. So now you have to social distance the officer, cannot film them. Why? Eight feet. It doesn't make any sense to me. If you're eight feet, you, you might as well be two feet. But this is what they're saying. New Arizona law make it illegal for people to film a police officer from eight feet or closer. Now, there's a, a movement afoot. These auditors that are going around, and I don't quite know how I feel about it. In the beginning, I thought it was a great idea. But now it almost feels, I know that people are exercising their, their right to film the police. I get that, and it sounds like a good thing, but there are a lot of bad actors out there who are provoking police, and I think that's counterproductive. And also, I believe that could segue into legislation like this. The more people disrespect the police and cause problems, all it takes is a couple of flags that are false to the, for the, the Constitution to be updated and local uh, governors and states to start placing restrictions, which is exactly what they did right here. And sometimes aggression is the goal of these people. It's just like the crapper hole. It was like a setup 
As soon as that happened, what were they able to do? They were able to bring in the National Guard for the first time to, quote unquote, protect the eggnog the nation. They basically militarized the whole process. So don't always think that aggression is the answer. That could just be a bait and switch drawing you into something that then they can use against us later. So in this case, Arizona, basically making it illegal to film police closer than eight feet. So whoever the, you know, the auditors are over there, they're going to have to deal with this. Now, many of them will say this is unconstitutional. And many will try to do it anyway and probably get thrown in jail and then there'll be legal battles and all this. But uh, wow, unbelievable. Now, what else do we have here? Starbucks closing stores. Why? Because customers were using drugs inside the store. I mean, how could that happen, right? Wait, you give out free syringes a block away. How in the heck did those people end up in a Starbucks? <laughs> how do we think they ended up in the Starbucks? You start giving away needles and that's exactly what people are going to do. So Starbucks is closing 16 stores around the country because of repeated safety issues, including drug use and other disruptive behaviors that threaten the staff. This is unbelievable. Seattle. Now, notice we were just talking about this, weren't we? The Seattle Space Needle. And I was telling you that it was spiritually a metaphor for hypodermic needles and syringes. And here we have a story confirming that. It's all about needles and Starbucks. Wow. So, I'm not a big fan of corporate America. These are the very people that basically thrived during the spam demic. Allowed to stay open and do whatever they wanted to do while the small businesses basically suffered. Now, many of you remember... On to our next story. Many of you will remember this guy from the crapper hole. Speaking of the crapper hole, right? He was caught on video telling people to storm the crapper hole. And then people are like puzzled. They're like, why didn't this guy get arrested and charged with inciting violence, sedition, and all the other things that everybody else got charged for? Well, now he's complaining about us. People with theories that this guy is was a Fed. <laughs> wow. Now, this is gaslighting, of course, because down here in the comments, I don't know if oh, this one didn't actually show the comments, but in the comments, people are like, yeah, dude, uh, you were sitting there inciting everybody to go in on several videotapes and you didn't even get arrested. So that's very suspicious. So people are on to this. They get it. They get it. Now let's get into this next story here. Now this is troubling. On the heels of the smack scene approval for infants, we now have a new infant condition emerging. But the two are not connected, of course, right? U.S. infants are falling sick with a life-threatening V. Rust that triggers fever, delirium, seizures, and sepsis. This is so sad what is happening, but you know, people are gonna do what they're going to do, unfortunately. The Bible says, My people perish because of lack of knowledge. This reminds me of the liver problems that had nothing to do with the teen approval. Or smack scenes that happened a week before that all started happening. What else do we have here? Let's listen to this one here. His largest Lawrence Ray brand, but it all came crashing down. Zareen Shah is in Los Angeles with the story. Good morning, Zareen. Hey, good morning, George. Victoria's Secret has rebranded itself and is embracing diversity and different sizes. This is long after the director of that Hulu series says the company became out of touch. But after years of research, there's one mystery he still couldn't figure out. Why the former CEO stayed so close for so long to Jeffrey Epstein. 
Seriously? Ooh, I wonder why he stayed so close to the stain, Victoria's Secret. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out, you guys. Many of these models were on the infamous plane. This was high-end traffic. That's exactly what was going on here. Nobody wants to say it, but I mean, a third grader can understand this. It was one of the world's biggest lingerie brands. It's an honor for me to be part of Victoria. Now, the sad thing about this is most of the names on the flight log <clears throat> were um, international, Russian, and Stu Ukrainian models. And the way it works is the stain goes and picks them up and their passports are confiscated and there is no one to lobby in behalf of these people. They go missing. Nobody ever knows what happened to them. And I believe that that is what was really going on. It was basically a meat factory. And this is why the stain and the Victoria's Secret CEO were in cahoots with one another. It's iconic lingerie clad runway shows featuring supermodels turned angels. Victoria's Secret was one of the greatest brands ever created. Look at this guy. He's like, uh, what do they call this? It had almost 50% of the market share in, in its face. category. Now a new docu-series, Victoria's Secret, Angels and Demons, traces the meteoric rise and fall. Of Guys doing like damage control, right? of a once seemingly unstoppable force. But in recent years, with the Me Too movement and cultural prioritizing diversity, the brand and former CEO... And we expected Mr. Groper in Chief himself to fix all this? To go after these elite, this elite traffic? This is how lost people are. He'll fix it. Trump will fix it. He's Groper in Chief. Les Wexner consistently under fire. Victoria's Secret lost connection with the customer. Things were falling apart. The series also focusing on ties between Wexner and disgraced financier and convicted sex offender. The Stain. Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, Jeffrey Epstein was Les Wexner's money manager for this many guy. years. Damage his control. involvement with the company Look at his face. was not official. Uh, there are people to whom we spoke who It was because of uh, intense fire and... Uh, and then, uh, th then they collapsed. That, that he had interfered due to intense fire in the company at a certain point, and being uh, alarmed by it. What do you mean by <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein interfered with Victoria's Secret? There was a certain point where it was reported to Wait. corporate executives that Epstein had posed as a Victoria's Secret. Uh, model. <laughs> and there's the explanation that 99% of people will accept as the truth from this guy. Unbelievable. Now, let's hop off of that. So frustrating. Now, I wanted to kind of wrap up the show with some follow-up because this is very, very important. This is one of the biggest revelations, I believe, of the year in terms of where all this is headed. What, what does the future hold for what these people have planned for all of us? And this is one of the definitions of one of the surnames of Artemis, the goddess from ancient Greece, whose twin is Apollo. And it says here that her surname is Ligo Desma or Lugo Desma, which sounds a lot like Lego, doesn't it? Close. But her statue was found by two brothers, Alopecus, which is Alopecia, and Astrobacchus, under a bush of willows. Willows represent hair on your head. Lugos means willows. So this will be a word we look out for. Lugos, Legos. Anytime you see this word, it's about the willow. And of course, this links into willow, Jada Pinkett, her alopecia, 
And what I believe was really going on there, let me go back into the chat here, but that whole situation, this is going to blow your mind, but this is how these people operate because I used to work in the pharmaceutical industry and we had endorsements and spokespersons for different drugs that we sold. I believe when I was selling NuvaRing, because I sold NuvaRing for a few years, many of you know what NuvaRing is, and we had Lisa Ling. She was our spokeswoman. We've Well, we've entered a new era of marketing where there are covert spokespeople. In other words, actors and actresses that are having a tough time in Hollywood can now endorse and be spokespeople for certain pharmaceutical companies and make up a story about their condition and the pharmaceutical company will pay them millions and millions of dollars and what better way to do that than to create a scene at a very popular televised event the grammars oscars whatever that was and then segue that into selling alopecia medication you think this isn't beyond these people to pull off a stunt like that how many people notice when you have alopecia, there are chunks of hair missing. You don't have a perfectly shaved bald head. Now, this would be a twofold type of thing, right? Because we already talked about what the shearing of the sheep meant. And you have these young girls shaving their heads in defiance of God. So they get a two for one. They shear off your connection to God, which saddens God. And then on top of that, they're selling their drugs. Unbelievable. Now, this is my theory on this. this is my personal idea. I'm not saying this is 100% true. But when you think about it, what better way to do covert endorsement? People are over endorsements now. They laugh at actors and actresses that get paid by pharmaceutical companies to, to endorse products. So how else are the product how else are the pharmaceutical companies going to tap into the marketing? They do it covertly. They do it covertly. So now we would have never known any of this had we not been digging into the esoterics and the, the spiritual aspects of all this and looking back at Apollo and Artemis. You guys, this is who the pharmaceutical companies worship. They worship Apollo, the Hippocratic Oath to Apollo, the bringer of disease and the bringer of the cure, requires sacrifice. You can't make this up. It is the truth. Let me go into the chat here. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. All right. Let's see what you guys are up to. There we go. Now, there's also been a trend of people losing all their hair. Like it's real. Well, who do you think is causing all that? I can't tell you who I think it is. They're saying it's happening naturally. But there is something going on, isn't there? Many of you have experienced and shared that with me. Some of you work at hair salons and you're hearing it from your customers and it's happening on a large scale now unless you contemplate these things and understand what's really happening this kind of stuff can drive you insane if you're if you have no explanation for why these things are happening in your life in the lives of the people that you love but once you understand what's really going on the Bible says, no weapon shall prosper. No weapon shall prosper. It might happen, but it's not going to prosper. It's not going to do well against the body of Christ. And that's because people wake up. So, all right. So those are some explanations. Hopefully, if you're experiencing something like this, we are praying for you that this weapon shall not prosper. All right. I love you guys. I'm going to pop off of here. I might do a re couple re-uploads on the weekend. We'll hang out in the, the chat. And I'll be able to chat with you guys. So that'll be a lot of fun. I love you. Have a great day, everybody. Take care and be safe.